I, I uh, spoke to Shauna Suko this, this afternoon before the session, and I said, uh, Shauna, we've got your bio in the, in the notebook. Everybody will see that. Tell me a couple of things that, about you that really uh, sort of set you apart, and she thought for a minute and said, well, I, will, I have been named one of the top 25 influencers in the meetings industry by Successful Meetings Magazine for the past two years. I said, well, that, that might be something you want to put in your bio. She said, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I think I need to update the bio. And she said, uh, MeetingsNet has named me one of their eight favorite speakers of the year. So there's another thing that you need to add to that bio. Uh, she's from St. Paul, Minnesota, obviously a great speaker. Uh, Join me in welcoming Shauna. Thank you, sir. How many meeting planners are bothered by this being here? You're worried somebody's going to fall, right? Oh, there's another one. OK. Yes, sir. OK. Yes, ma'am. What's that? I need to toggle. That's a first. I'm toggling. I'm toggling. Hold on. Here it comes. Yes. OK, are we toggled? OK. So I want to ask of you, what are the reasons we come to conferences? Yell stuff out. Networking, number one reason. What else? Learn stuff. What else? Generate business, Update. get updates on what's happening, celebration, right? Celebrate, is anybody gonna have fun tonight? Hospitality. The hospitality suite? <laughs> okay, so in, in my studies, I've been thinking about this a lot and I've come up with four C's. Some of you have heard me say this before, but I think there are four things that begin with the letter C, so they're easy to remember, for why we come to conferences, and they are, Community, networking, to meet other people. Suppliers, how many of you, of you are here to meet new planners? Uh-huh, okay. Um, collaboration. You th one of these is content, of course, but I think content is more important when there's collaboration involved, so we're gonna do this today. And also, when you hear a great speaker, it kind of doesn't resonate until you talk to someone else about it, right? Like, wow, wasn't that speaker great? Or he really made me think, or she really inspired me or something. So the first one is community. The second one is collaboration. The third one, celebration. We have had a really crappy five years, right? Our industry has suffered. It's time for us to celebrate because we're back. How cool is that? And the last one, change lives. We may not all be helping dropouts um, not drop out from high school, like the gentleman back there, wave your hand. We may not all be solving world hunger, but every single meeting that we do changes somebody's life in a small way or a large way, right? So what we do is pretty cool, and I, over the next, I promise I will get everybody out of here at six o'clock to board the buses, but in the next 45 minutes, we're gonna do all four of those. Sound good? Okay. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm a little kooky about acronyms. I've come up with a new one here. ROA, how many people have heard of ROI? Return on investment. I proclaim hereby that there is an acronym that is far more important than return on investment for people at our conferences. And that is ROA, return on attention. You have paid your money, you have given of your time, and now you are sitting in the conference. I figure that attendees will politely, these days, give the speaker about five minutes of their, of their time and attention before they drift off. So if we can hold their attention through the way we engage our audiences, we will deliver successful content that enables them to achieve successful community, celebration, all those four C's. So return on attention. We're going to talk about that later. But I am gonna go through this timeline to kind of set the bar for where we are now, and this is gonna be really collaborative. So, suppliers standing in the back, if you wanna meet a bunch of people really intensely and really uh, quickly, move on up. Come on, plenty of seats in the front. This is gonna be a lot of networking, so come on up. 
You're afraid of me, aren't you? You should be. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to talk about meetings 1.0, meetings 2.0, and meetings 3.0. We have evolved. Okay. As a culture, we have evolved. I'm going to start with meetings 1.0. What is it? Okay. Well, first of all, in order to explain that, I need to set the groundwork. When I count to five, I want everybody to be holding their cell phone in the air. On your marks, get set, go. One, two, <laughs> three, four, five. Wow. We have a couple slackers, but mostly. Okay. Sometimes, if the speaker is terrible, they don't have five minutes, they have five seconds. You guys have something that is far more interesting than a boring old speaker on the stage that's in your hand. You have the world in your hands. You have Facebook, and you have YouTube, and you have your email, you have work, you have whatever your heart can, can dream of, you have in the palm of your hand. So, as planners, we have a huge challenge on our hands. This is our competition, okay, right up here. This is our audience. This is my son, he just turned 11. How many of you have an 11-year-old boy? How many of you know an 11-year-old boy? How many of you have ever known or had an 11-year-old boy? You know what I'm talking about. Their attention span is this big, but at the same time, they can do 17 things at once. How is this possible? I tell you, it is possible. I can be hollering something at him while he's on his computer and listening to music and the TV's on. And I'm like, you're not listening to me. And he can repeat it word for word, what I just said to him. Okay, this generation thinks differently and every other generation is gonna be challenged when this one comes up. We already have our own challenges in place. So, meetings 1.0, what does that mean? That means the way meetings used to be. I'm gonna take you back to a time when the web was brand new. I'm gonna date myself here, but who remembers getting their very first AOL CD in the mail? <laughs> it was awesome! We came inside, we put it in the, what, the disk drive. disk drive. It may not have even been a CD. What is, was it a disk? Was it a floppy disk? Or like 10 floppy disks? So we put it in, we unplugged the phone to plug in the modem. Okay, who here is under 30? You have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> and five hours later, we were up and running. It was awesome. And what was so cool about it was there were like 10 websites we could go to and learn 10 different things. But it was a one-way dissemination of information. We went there, we learned, and then we left, right? And we were happy with that. So were attendees back in the day of Meetings 1.0. This is not that long ago. We could have lecture after lecture after lecture after lecture, and people were happy with that. They were fine with it. They didn't know to really expect more. They could do one thing at a time. How many of you today can do one thing at a time? Nobody. You, this guy can do one thing at a time. <laughs> I go crazy if I can't check my email like every five minutes. Five minutes is long sometimes, right? I can't just, I mean, multitasking is the new norm. So, meetings are not today what they used to be. People could stand up at the podium, and you could have eight hours of this, right? Okay. Audiences, 1.0, didn't demand anything else. They were happy, as I mentioned, with that. Let me show you a little video to set the stage. If I want to sleep, I'll go there. And if I want to read, I'll have this in my chair. And if I want to hear a monotonous drone, I'll ask a politician about free trade zones. And if I want charts, I'll read the S&P. And if I want words, I'll tune in Connie or Jay-Z. You think I'm paying attention? Well, get inside my head. I feel like the zombies in the dawn of the dead. It's inhumus. It's a crime. It's so painful, I got a brain full. They ought to throw you in the joint, cause you're killing me with your PowerPoint. If we lecture our audiences to death today, 
they may not be looking like this on the outside, but they're feeling like this. Who, have, who in this audience has ever felt like this in a meeting before? Okay. So we're going to do the world's worst example of the world's worst meeting ever. And I'm going to throw into the mix some different generations just to show you guys what we're dealing with nowadays. Because now that we've thrown all these new generations into the mix, it gets really interesting. OK, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to split you all up randomly. This section right here, you all are going to be my generation Y. You're the youngsters in the workforce right now, OK? Yes, she says, yes. <laughs> OK, stay tuned. I have an assignment for you. Y'all in the middle, Generation X, you're my people. Yes, you're the, the Midlands, OK? Y'all, I have to say y'all after a guy from Cheyenne walks up here in boots. I don't know, it's not, uh, or, OK, so y'all, even though that's not really Southern, but anyway. OK, y'all are the boomers, OK? Is that OK? That's OK? OK, yeah, she says, that's fine. OK, so what's going to happen is we're going to do a little exercise. I am going to come up to the podium and deliver the world's worst speech, okay? We're going to pretend that we're at a meeting version 1.0. And I'm going to give each of you a challenge according to your generation. You guys over here, how many of you still have your, your smartphones out? Hold them up, you're going to need them. Put them face down for now, and you might want to get a pen out, okay? These guys are the generation Ys. They are the quickest to grab for that phone when they are bored to tears like I'm about to do them, okay? So generation Y. When I start joining on, I'm gonna give you something to research because your mind's gonna wander, okay? So um, let's play some Mad Libs. Name an obscure country. Pakistan, okay, Pakistan. Um, okay, your phones are face down. Don't start till I say start and there is no collaborating on this. You're on your own, okay? So, I want to know who the current leader of Pakistan is and when he took power. Name a household item. A toaster. A toaster. I want to know who invented the toaster and when. Oh, put that phone down. Put those phones down. Da, 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 da. <gasps> Generation Y is a little competitive. Okay, let's name, um, let's name a utensil. A spoon, a spoon, the spork. Did somebody say spork? <laughs> Why on earth was the spork invented and when? Okay, now don't start yet. Keep those phones face down. Generation X. I hope everybody has a piece of paper because you're going to need it. Y'all are the voracious note takers. Generation X, you don't want to miss a thing. So, take that piece of paper and put three columns on it. Easy breezy. Okay. While I am droning on up here, you all are going to have your minds wander, but you guys are list takers, note takers. You, you live in your heads a lot. You've got to get, get that out in your... Who here from Generation X sleeps with a notepad by their bed? You've got to get that out of your head so you can go to sleep, am I right? So, okay, so... First column, name a, name a sport. Football. Okay, put, put at the top of the first column, football. Um, second column, how about a hobby? What was that? Dancing. Dancing in column number two. And the top of column number three, um, let's go with states. Okay, Iowa. <laughs> okay, don't start yet. When I say, when I come up to the podium and start droning on, y'all are going to list as many things as you can under that heading. So anything you can think of on football, just do a brain dump. Anything you can think of about dancing, brain dump, okay? Boomers. Boomers are the polite listeners. These are the guys that made it through all of these lectures and boring meetings for years and years and years because they're polite. They were raised up right. You guys are not going to take out your phones because that's rude. You're not going to let your mind wander on paper, because that would be rude. But you guys are going to have a party this weekend. And in your mind, you're going to come up with what your five-course dinner is going to be. And your shopping list. Okay? So it has to be in your head. And you're going to sit there with your hands on the table and just look at me like I am the best speaker you have ever heard in your life. 
while you're looking through your, or going through your mind and doing your menu. Okay, give me the world's worst conference topic. What? Contracts. Oh gosh, that's all too near and dear to our hearts. What's a, what's a conference you'd rather slit your wrists than go to? Budgeting. Okay. The <laughs> Perfect, okay. When I say welcome to the conference, you all start doing your tasks until I say stop. Okay, ready? Welcome to the 2013 Conference on Budgets. My name is Shauna Suko. I will be your speaker for the next four hours, and then we'll, then we'll take a break. <laughs> Budgets were invented by Bob Eureka Jones Smith VI, who was the jester of the court of Julius Caesar back in 2142 BC. Is this on? Okay. Um, budgets were invented by Bob as a means of keeping track of, of um, taxes that were collected for the market where people sold their wares, such as pottery and robes, and speaking of robes, Bob had a robe that he wore so people knew that he was the official budgeter of the kingdom, and his robe was puce, and his wife Barbara made the robe when he was 17 as a gift of holy matrimony, and he budgeted until he was 71 and then he retired, where he then moved to Vesuvius to raise prune trees. You guys aren't supposed to be listening. <laughs> I can't do this anymore, you guys. This is horrible. Was that awful? Oh my gosh, okay. Generation Y. I gotta come down here. Okay, Generation Y. Who's the current leader of Pakistan? Okay, and what year did he come into power? July 30th, wow, that's recent, okay. And what was something else I had you guys research? History of the toaster. Okay. Um, what was, oh, oh, we gotta know, who invented the spork? Francis, somebody, why on earth? Okay. 1874, the spork was invented? Shut up. I thought Kentucky Fried Chicken invented that sucker. Yeah. <laughs> what was Bob's wife's name? Don't, don't help him, don't help him. My point was, this poor section was so bored to tears that they grabbed for their phone before anybody else. He's so engaged, he, he's so into the spork that he missed all the fantastically fascinating stuff I was talking about at the podium, can you believe it? <laughs> Generation X, football. Okay, now, the thing I wanna reveal about Generation X, where are my fellow Generation X people in the room? We're a little bit competitive. Who got the most things in the football column? How many did you get? Who got more than 20? Anybody get more than 10? Couple people, who got more than 15? How many did you get? 12, how many did you get, lady in blue? She's counting, she wants it to be accurate. 12 also, okay, you guys wanna arm wrestle? See who gets this? Okay, um, what color was Bob's robe? Use. Boomers. Who has an awesome menu that they are just dying to actually throw a party this Saturday so they can do the menu? You'll do it? Thank you. Can we come? Okay. What's your, what's your first course? Chicken noodle soup. You're making this from scratch? or Okay. Caesar salad. Chicken cordon bleu. What year was budgeting invented? And then uh, she wants to talk about the menu. She's like, yeah, I don't care about that. <laughs> okay, my point is 
oh my gosh, we cannot lecture people to death, sorry, anymore, and expect them to pay attention. The most boring speaker in the world, even the most engaging speaker in the world, your mind still drifts off these days because you're used to doing more than one thing at a time, right? It's very challenging. So, which brings us to 2.0. What happened with 2.0? Well, the web evolved. Who remembers their first chat room? How cool was that? It doesn't have to be dirty. Don't go there. But the web started being interactive. Who remembers their first email? How awesome was your first email? Do you remember like who it was from? Seriously, you remember who it was from? That was a big deal, right? I remember my first text. I remember where I was when I got my first text. But it's, it's a big deal, right? It's like a new frontier. But it, be, it started to become interactive, and this was really cool. Meetings 2.0. Remember um, audience response systems? The first ones were like this big, and you could vote. And then like six hours later, they'd have the results, and then they'd come and say, hey, everybody voted for B. Woo, do you remember this? Well, now it's a, they're a lot quicker and you can do it on your phone, but this arose because our culture started to change and started to demand more from our speakers and from our conferences. So, meetings 2.0, audiences said, uh, don't just leave me sitting here listening to you, I wanna, I wanna participate in this. Okay, 2.0. 2.0, um, meetings then became more collaborative, but only with the speaker. We still didn't get the whole audience collaborating with each other. That's coming next, but let me show you a little video about this two-way street. Maybe. Oh, it's such a good one. Let me see if I can get it to come up. If you want to lose belly fat, you know, make, make note of that. Uh, can you see that on the bottom there? Okay, let's see if I can get this. Okay, well, we're having technology challenges today. That's okay. Okay, well, anyway, the monkeys each have a laser pointer and they start pointing it at the guy's crotch when he's talking about, you know, something about like the strategy of the company. The point is the audiences are starting to take back the power. If we don't, as speakers, as planners, um, enable them to have some of the power at the conference, they're going to take it. And I can tell when this happens because people are looking at their phone and they think I can't see them. I'm up here. I see you doing this. I see you. Okay. So, these are your audience members. This is the speaker. Who's going to win this battle? The audience. So, if planners and industry professionals can just make it so and give the power to the audience, our conferences will be so stellar. So, I'm going to give some examples here. Actually, I'm going to ask you all for examples. This is a meetings 2.0 interaction that I'm about to have. Um, I can just ask for a simple show of hands. I can ask you to shout things out. This is 2.0. You all are interacting with me. Still not yet with each other, but with me. Okay. Generation Y and Millennials. Those are really the same thing. But Generation Y, how can we get them involved? If I'm up here talking about budgeting, how could I involve them? Tweet about it. How about you guys tweet? Here's a handle. Tweet about this. Who can tell me who invented budgeting rather than me just telling you? Get them involved and get them interacting with their devices because you can't fight the devices. You may as well incorporate the devices, right? Generation X, my people, we are stuck in the middle between the boomers over here who are never, ever, ever going to retire, ever. <laughs> And the Generation Ys who just graduated and think that they can walk right into the CEO. What's your name? I'm sorry? Eddie. Eddie. Eddie, I know you're the CEO. I have a couple suggestions for you. Let's have lunch. Yeah. But why people have no problem in skipping right over us, Generation X people? Are you infuriated by this? <laughs> to get to the boomers and say, I've got a couple ideas for you. You really should, you, you really should hear. I've got an, uh, an idea about how to improve the company. Really? We, Xers, have been paying our dues for how long? And then the economy takes a downturn and these guys are staying another 10 years? Really? Thank you, boomers, for putting a crack in the glass ceiling. Boomer women, thank you, am I right? Thank you. Xers, 
give us a chance to break through it, please. We are paying our dues. So how can you make a Generation X person happy at your meeting? Give them a chance to showcase their knowledge. How many CMPs do I have in the room? All right, a round of applause. Round of applause. <laughs> Boomers. So, so back on X's, back on X's. We want a chance to be heard, to show our bosses and our higher ups and the CEO how smart we are. We want to pave that way so that we can get the promotion someday, if and when they ever retire. Okay, so we want to be heard, we want to showcase our knowledge. So this is a great thing to ask Q&A or have microphones. Generation X's are most likely to ask questions in front of the whole crowd of the speaker. Come up in front of everybody, Generation X. Okay, boomers, they want to showcase their wisdom, but they are too polite to do so and brag about themselves. So we have to ask them. Who has been in the industry 20 years or more? Please stand. 20 years or more, please stand. A huge round of applause. Anybody 25 years or more? Raise your hand. Wow, very cool, very cool. Oh, stand, we want to stand. Come on, 25 years, stand. 30, anybody 30? Congratulations, thank you. You guys took this job when it wasn't even a job. You guys made it so. I mean, seriously, they paved the way for all of us, pioneers, really. Okay, so, oh, we're back to this? Okay, so this is a way to do a 2.0 interaction. I'm still, it's a lot more lively than that first part, right? Where I'm just talking at you guys. Now I'm kind of interacting with you, but we can do better. Let's do better, shall we? Okay, with the time we have left, let me cover 3.0. Okay, Web 3.0 is so cool. This is where the audience has taken control of the outcome of their own interaction. Who remembers the, um, the Doritos commercial from the Super Bowl this year? Who remembers the Doritos contest from the Super Bowl? What do you win for sending in your own commercial, creating your own commercial? Okay, let me give a different example. <laughs> I bet this crowd remembers the baby Clydesdale commercial from the Super Bowl. Oh, this is, yes, this gets them every, if you don't remember Doritos, you remember the Clydesdale. Okay, the Clydesdale, okay, so Budweiser paid millions of dollars to have this ad made probably, right? And usually the big reveal is at the Super Bowl, not this year. This year they put it on social media and they created buzz before the Super Bowl. So when the Super Bowl came on and I'm waiting for this commercial because I've seen the commercial and I'm, you know, oh my gosh. So when it came on, I shushed the room. <laughs> Shh, everybody, here's the Clydesdale commercial. And it worked. It was social. They were creating this whole crowd of fans before the commercial even aired. Um, McAfee, McAfee, however you say it. Who, who's familiar with McAfee, the antivirus type product? Okay. If you go on their website and you need help, maybe 15 years ago, you would get helped by an employee of McAfee. Today, who helps you? A complete stranger who's not employed by McAfee. Why do they do this? We don't have any idea. They do this because it's community. It's, it's their community. And they also get little badges. I mean, they don't get paid, but they get little badges. It says, oh, I've, I've helped a thousand people or whatever. It's social. Okay, so they're creating their own experience. And the Doritos commercial, by the way, Doritos gave a million dollars to the person that could create the most engaging Doritos commercial, and that commercial got played during the Super Bowl. And it created a frenzy. Do you remember a couple years ago, the dog crashing through the screen door to get to the, that was the first winner. And there was a huge buzz around it. They could have paid a million dollars to somebody in New York to create a commercial that would be forgettable, but they didn't. They gave the power to the crowd. Okay. so. That's Web 3.0. Everything out there is more collaborative now. Facebook is Web 3.0. We can collaborate with the crowd. There's nobody at Facebook monitoring and saying, this gets posted and that doesn't. Okay. So meetings 3.0. This is what meetings 3.0 needs to look like in order to engage audience 3.0. Our culture has changed. We want to learn from each other. And my feeling is there is more knowledge in almost any room of people than up on the stage. 
So I am going to turn it over to you guys for the last 15 minutes, and you're going to create your own experience. So we've seen a 1.0 example. That was horrible. <laughs> we've seen a 2.0, just a, a couple examples of me interacting with you. We all know what that's like. The 3.0 example is I'm going to shut up and let you guys create the best outcome ever. And that is meeting and networking with each other. So with that, I'm going to ask everybody to stand, because I would bet half of you are sitting next to somebody you already know. Please move and sit next to complete strangers, because this is the point of coming to this conference. Complete strangers. seconds. 30 seconds. Take your seats. If you can hear me, clap once. Isn't that the best exercise? It's from kindergarten, by the way. Okay, take, take your seats with groups of strangers. Did you feel the difference in the energy in the room? Just from me giving away the power and going, okay, just do this one thing? The energy was crazy. I know I'm doing my job in creating great collaboration when I have trouble getting your attention back. I know I'm doing my job. Okay, so flip your chairs around so that you're in groups of about six. We need to get you know, groups of about six. So flip your chairs around if you need to. And introduce yourselves real quickly. Just introduce yourselves. Okay, if you can hear me, raise your hand. Very good, okay. Now, what you just did is still pretty typical. You sat down with a group of strangers and you introduced yourself, right? Okay, I would bet if I asked you to put your hand over your eyes now and tell me who all is sitting around you you'd have a hard time, because it wasn't that memorable. It was nice, but it wasn't that memorable. We are about to get memorable. Okay, here's what we're gonna do next. We are gonna do something that makes certain generations very uncomfortable, especially women of certain generations. We're gonna brag about ourselves. <laughs> She's like, oh no, I'm so not doing that. Okay, so. We're gonna brag about ourselves. Here are the rules, there are rules. Everybody gets 30 seconds to share something that you did. You cannot say we, and you cannot say my team. It has to be I, it has to be professional. It cannot be about your children or your pet, okay? I actually, I did this exercise with a group in Buffalo, New York, and there was a group of ladies and the certain generations that have trouble with this are my generation and boomers, especially women. Generation Y has no trouble with this, everybody. <laughs> Beware. So, I did this exercise, and the first woman said, well, here's, here's what I did, and everybody congratulated her. The second woman said, well, mine's not as good as yours. <laughs> the third woman, oh, you guys, that's so great. Mine's not as good as the two of yours. <sighs> And they went around the table, and before they even said what they're proud of, they already totally just took the power of, of that celebration away. So don't do that, okay? Own your wonderful accomplishment. 30 seconds per person, and I'm going to tell you when to rotate. Starts right now. Go. For six months, and I've jumped out a perfectly good airplane to not have my parachute open in my Oh my god. god. So those are my two planes. Oh, wow. That was an awesome plane. You should write a book. She is tight. So keep going, Dan. Okay, rotate. Sweet. Not a lot of time. Rotate. Next person. I'm 
everyone come here? I'm Daryl. Um, I guess the most recent thing for me, Greg, was anything like this. Um, got a job. Okay, you're done. Okay, rotate, sorry. Rotate again if you haven't. No, you can't do that. Rotate, next person. Rotate again. Rotate. Next person. Okay. If you can hear me, clap twice. Give yourselves a round of applause. Those people are clapping in the back. All right. <laughs> this is the type of thing that can be done in any industry, any type of conference. People want to hear what other people have accomplished because it might spark some creativity in themselves. Uh, it helps you remember the people. How, how much better do you know them just from 30 seconds of them talking about themselves? It's that simple. I wish I could give you each five minutes because we really, how many of you have family members that don't quite understand what you do? <laughs> we are terrible at bragging on ourselves. Next time somebody says, what do you do? I want you to say, I change lives. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna give you an assignment for the bus. Okay, normally I would love to give you plenty of time to go around again and talk about what your biggest challenge is right now. Okay, but we are out of time. I want to make sure I don't stand between you and the bar. So I'm going to give you an assignment for the bus. Okay, stick with the people in your group and try to sit with them on the bus. Here's your assignment. I want you to go around again in your group. And I want each of you to share, what is your biggest challenge right now? And what can the people around you do to help you? Do you need to brainstorm? Are you in a fix? Do you need a new job? If you're a supplier, tell us if you have trouble meeting planners. We know we're awful to you guys. We know it. <laughs> if you need help with a certain market segment, whatever it is, be honest, be authentic, and just see what kind of ideas flow from that. Okay, so. Now, before you go, I want you guys to exchange business cards with this little group. And in addition to the challenge on the bus, I'm going to challenge you throughout this conference to listen and look for solutions to the problems of the people in this group. You're going to be a connector. You're going to be a helper. 
These people are your newest industry colleagues. Okay, raise your hand if you've been part of a violent street gang. <laughs> Nobody? Okay, one of these days it's going to happen. Okay, so if you're listening, touch your nose and rub your belly and pat your head and stick your right foot in. That's my left foot. Whoops. Okay. Okay, so eyes, eyes on me. Eyes on me. Okay. This group is your newest group of industry colleagues, and this is so important. Please look for ideas to solve their challenges throughout the next couple days while you're here, but then keep in touch with them after the conference. You have no idea where this could lead, okay? And more so than that, you all are now your own gang. You are a gang for good. And to make that as concrete as possible. I want each of you, over the next 30 seconds, each group to come up with your secret gang sign. Okay, go. Ten seconds. Okay. Which group wants to be the first to show me their secret gang sign? You can't tell me it's a secret. This is for your group over the next couple days. If you see someone in the aisle, or you see someone in the class, or you see someone tonight, men, if you see someone near the urinals, I want you to flash your gang sign if they're in your gang. I saw this. Hi, Bob. How are you, Bob? I saw it. <laughs> I know men in that bathroom thing can be awkward. Okay, so. In closing, this year is so important for all of this stuff that I just talked about. This kind of stuff, I've just shown you two really super easy exercises. You guys now, whether you're introverted, how many people consider themselves an introvert? I don't want to raise my hand. <laughs> how many of you, this is the first time you've attended this conference? Okay, it can be a little weird, even if you're an extrovert, right? You just met five, six, seven, twelve people. Your group is huge in the back there. But you just met so many people that are now your allies, and they're going to help you throughout the conference. So your reach of looking for your own solutions just multiplied by six, eight, ten, whatever. Okay. So if you can manage ways within your conference to help people connect, help people celebrate their accomplishments, the accomplishments of others, help people collaborate, you will change their lives. And I'm hoping that each of you will, in some way, help to change somebody else's life in your group. So stay in touch, please. A month from now, figure out how you guys are going to stay in touch. LinkedIn, maybe you'll have a conference call, whatever, but stay in touch. So why is this year critical? Let me back up to that. Because if we don't engage them this year, this year the money's back. People are coming back to conferences, right? If we don't engage them this year, they will find a different way to spend their time and their money and their attention, if we don't give them the return on attention that they're looking for. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you on the buses. <laughs>